NCP uh, consisted of two articles that I wrote. Um, both of them are related to trauma and the treatment of trauma specifically with EMDR, which is eye movement desensitization and reprocessing. Um, EMDR is an emerging approach to treating trauma, very innovative and effective treatment and still being studied. And so I was contributing to that body of knowledge with two articles. EMDR is for people who have PTSD or other types of treatments. It's based in neurobiology. Um, it does some brain restructuring um, using bilateral stimulation, meaning side to side, left, right uh, stimulation, along with some mild exposure, um, similar to prolonged exposure, but much more brief and mild. And those two things together, the brief exposure and the bilateral stimulation in combination, uh, tend to help people process their traumatic memories so that they can, uh, at the end of treatment, think about their trauma without experiencing the severe trauma symptoms. It's very helpful for flashbacks, nightmares, anxiety, depression, rage, just a, just a wide range of symptoms associated with PTSD. Both of these articles, um, as I said, refer to EMDR, and I had experience with EMDR for about 10 years as a clinician in private practice before I began the program at Tulane. So I came to Tulane with a very strong vision of what I wanted to study, uh, knowing that in each of my classes, I was going to be able to tailor the coursework to the subjects that I was interested in. So I came with this powerful interest in EMDR and therapy for uh, trauma, and particularly trauma therapy for older adults. And so um, coming with that focus in every class, I was given the choice of topics um, as I was writing papers in each course, and I chose EMDR and older adults and trauma therapy again and again and again, um, until I felt I had really gotten a breadth of information about that topic. I, uh, I had an, an idea when I came here, not only that I wanted to learn about EMDR, but also that I really wanted to maximize my learning. Uh, I started a doctoral program in my late twenties and life intervened and I ended up not completing that program. And so coming back to school in my 50s was the accomplishment of a lifelong goal. And I was very excited to have the opportunity and determined to just do my absolute best and just um, work far beyond whatever um, the minimum requirement was. And so picking these topics and throwing myself into it with, with a lot of enthusiasm, I really picked my professor's brains, especially um, Dr. Bruce Thayer and Dr. Amy Trailer. Those were the two um, that uh, seemed the most receptive and we just spent uh, many hours talking about these papers that I was developing and, and them reading multiple drafts and giving me feedback. And in the end, the papers that I wrote for their courses uh, became the basis of the journal articles that I wrote and I didn't need to do very much to create the journal article once I had done such a thorough job on the coursework. I had Dr. Thayer for three courses in total. And in the first course, um, he asked each of us to stand up in front of the class and speak a little bit about our area of research interest. And of course, mine was very well developed and I was very uh, enthusiastic about it. And after I explained it, he uh, told me he didn't have any confidence in EMDR, that he'd been trained uh, in other methods and he didn't see the value in EMDR and he thought it was a bunch of hokum. And so I was uh, motivated by that. I could have, I guess, could have been discouraged, but I wasn't. I was instead fired up to show him that it wasn't uh, a bunch of hokum. I'd been practicing it successfully for 10 years and really had confidence in it. And so it was, it provoked me um, into doing really my best work to kind of show him what I knew and where the state of the field was. Um, that he uh, 
that he didn't yet know about. And when I turned in the paper and he was finally um, reading it, he told me, you've persuaded me. That was a very uh, big moment for me. Um, I'm a practitioner of EMDR and I was trained by a man here in Austin, Texas. And I'm in touch with that EMDR community of therapists. Um, I'm in a consultation group. I'm in a group practice where all of us uh, treat trauma in different modalities, but many of us use EMDR. Um, I go to a lot of trainings and seminars uh, virtually and in person when that was possible. Um, and so I have a lot of ties to the trauma therapy community and not just therapists, but also psychiatrists and case managers and nonprofit agencies here in Austin that work with groups like veterans groups, um, domestic violence survivors, and so on. And so I was able to go to a lot of these seminars and talk about the work that I was doing at the Tulane uh, program and explain to them where the state of the research was, because a lot of these folks have been practicing maybe 10 years or more. They're very up on the latest in terms of technique, but they haven't read a lot about theory uh, and they don't really know what's happening in academia. And so to be able to write a theoretical paper about EMDR and then go and explain it to them and why it was important for them to know that this is, this is what was happening um, was a really big uh, boost to my career and, and to my connections within that community. It's interesting to consider the impact that a theoretical article has on social workers and on the uh, academics that study social work and on the populations that receive services from social workers because theory seems very remote in one sense. It seems very abstract and it is. Um, at the same time, however, theory informs practice and without theory, we don't know how to test whether our interventions are effective or not. So theory is really the beginning of establishing an evidence-based practice. Without a sound theory and then an ability to test that theory, there won't be any evidence. So even though my article is fairly remote because it's a theoretical article, um, it does, I think, have a big impact potentially on how people uh, understand the evidence and are able to use the evidence to prove that this intervention is or is not effective. And ultimately that's the most important thing um, in providing a treatment is to know that it's effective. This question is a bit tough for a, uh, the kind of theoretical articles that I was writing. Um, because I doubt that anyone outside of academic circles will read my articles. Um, and I doubt that anyone will look at my article and be struck by an amazing intervention that they can go deliver in communities or to individuals. Um, but I do hope that the article will shape the thinking of students and of academics that then will train and become practitioners um, and that that will be the major impact that it will have is to uh, help the thinking and the, the understanding uh, of the practitioners, which then will be able to do a better job of serving the communities.